My name is Sherry David Mulligan, and this is Mulligan's Through the Podcast, Music, Film, Food, and Wine. We're going to touch on several of those bases with our guest, Lorena McKinnon, uh, who is coming to us today, I love this, not just from the world of music, but the world of film, as there is a film coming out uh, in which she has a stellar role. She is the star of, <laughs> one of the stars of Road to the Lemon Grove. It's a, it's <laughs> It's out now, and actually, I know that I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of making light of it because even though you play the role of God, there's not a lot not a lot of God being played in the role. However, you play the role of God. It's on your it's on your resume now. You saw the script, and you saw the 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 words written on the page, but you had to at that point you had to you have to come up with the character as all actors have to do. Where where did you begin your search? Where where was the voice? Well, Dale, uh, I mean, as most directors do, they have the overarching vision of a project. In actual fact, I wasn't. I mean, I knew the synopsis of it when he uh, asked me to to actually record the part, and we did spend some time looking at the footage and the scenes where where my voiceover would be involved. Um, but uh, clearly he made an, uh, a creative choice to choose a female voice yes. and as well as um, t- that the, the, the nature of the voice, the, the character, the sentiment was perhaps not so omnipotent, but it was uh, <laughs> something coming from a, a, a different motherly angle, you might say. <laughs> a, a reasoned voice. A reasoned voice. <laughs> Don't we all wish God? Oh, please. <laughs> oh, please. Oh, please. Um, I, I find it. And first of all, the, the, the scene itself, which starts the whole film, is, is uh, the deceased uh, Italian father, elder, Bert Young. And he's speaking. It's, it's a, a crack in a door. It's a, two gigantic mm-hmm. doors. And the light is spilling through. And the voice carries, uh, is carried by the light. And so it's very dramatic, isn't it? There's nothing, yes. nothing easy about it. No, uh, no. I mean, it is a very dramatic moment. And, and Dale and I discussed, you know, how, sh- how, how should this moment um, be uh, played? But, I mean, he clearly had, uh, 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 you know, it wasn't quite on the edge of crankiness, but there was a kind of perturbedness that, um, about God's voice that needed to be in, in this moment. And, um, yeah, it, it, it is a dramatic moment, that big door, and he's standing there, and you see, you, know, you wonder who or what is on the other side. He's, he's trying to bargain with God, Lorena. He's, you know, he's, <laughs> he's trying to work his way. All he wants to do is do something for his son, and, that, and, and that's played by Nick Mancuso. And thus, this because it sets up the entire film right there. Yeah. That's yeah. that. That's your that's your roadmap that you want to follow. When you went to Stratford, did you intend to be an actor? No, I, and I never intended to settle here. I had uh, moved from Morden, Manitoba, to uh, Winnipeg for a few years, but I was involved in Rainbow Stage, and I was trying. I was exploring where was my future in music or theater or musical theater. And um, one, the, the spring of 1981, I found myself in Toronto, and a friend of mine was auditioning for the season, and, and I was an equity member, and I, for a lark, I just went down to the equity office and auditioned for a, a musical part in HMS Pinafore, okay. and um, was invited to be part of the chorus in that year. I left all my household effects in Winnipeg, and stayed for that season, then drove my little Honda Civic back to Manitoba. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it was also the time of um, John Hirsch's tenure as the artistic director, and he he had I guess he he had seen I think in that first audition I had to do some kind of acting, and anyway he I I don't remember the exact lineage, but he invited me then to be part uh, to sing the part of series the next year in a projection of The Tempest that he was directing, but also asked me to understudy the part of Portia in Julius Caesar, mm. which I actually went on to perform uh, when Len, Len Carrier was playing the part of Brutus. 
And then I also understudied uh, arms, uh, Ryan on Arms of the Man. And Douglas Campbell was also there at the time, and he was encouraging me to explore what possibilities there might be uh, as an actress, and particularly was working with me on a, on a, uh, on a version of St. Joan. So the St. Joan was the lead-up to God. <laughs> wow. Um, and, and, uh, but I, uh, but there was, it was also a time I was becoming interested in the Celtic music, and, uh, and so that, that road diverged, you know, and, and I, I took the other road rather than the acting and the, hmm. the acting one. Did you ever look back on that and think? Not, not, not entirely. I mean, <clears throat> all my growing up years, I had intended to be, or I, I thought I wanted to be a veterinarian. So the fact that I ended in, uh, a, a, in as a professional in the arts at all was a bit of a, a surprise. And I maintained that music chose me rather than me it. But um, no, it was I, I did I haven't really looked. Back. Okay, it, it begs two questions. One, uh, and it goes back to my original question. Um, playing the role of God, w- uh, did they know, or or were you uh, comfortable with the spirituality? Are, are you a religious person? Well, I've uh, through through some of the the research that I've done over the years uh, around the history of the Celts, uh, their the religion and spirituality comes up. Uh, not infrequently, and it really caused me to reflect on what's my relationship with religion and, and, and spirituality. Uh, I, I mean, I'm, I'm of the view that human species has a need to be spiritually engaged, right. and religions were um, evolved in response to that need. Um, but, uh, yes, I would say I'm, I'm certainly... I, 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 I look to be in, look to be spiritually engaged, and I get a great deal of guidance from a variety of religious paths. Hmm. And I know you're a searcher, so that that search is not yet finished. You still have all those days ahead of you to to find your path. It's that shining light, so to speak. In your singing, I believe you are acting. You are, in fact, in some of the very stronger lyrics. Uh, uh, you you are drawn into it. You are telling us a story, and I believe you become that character. Have I, I misinterpreted, or do you believe that? No, I don't, I don't think you've misinterpreted uh, 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 per se, but I would say that, um, you know, I think that, I don't, I, I don't know, it would be interesting to ask bona fide actors if this is what happens, but you find a strand of commonality in your own kind of truth and that it's less acting than it is an act of channeling um, a thread. And so with, with my music, I feel that I wouldn't sing anything that I didn't really believe in. Right. Um, and so the challenge then is, as an actor might on the stage, is... is particularly when you're on tour many and performing many nights in, the, in a row, how do you find that, how do you go to a place that makes that a fresh uh, uh, and uh, inspired experience for, so, for not just yourself but for those listeners? Some songs, as you well know, uh, Lorena, uh, have, carry a certain weight. I'm thinking of Breaking of the Sword, the salute to mm. Vimy Ridge. There's weight with it, with each and every word. And there's lives... Lost lives, lived families. Mm-hmm. When you sing that song, do you feel that weight, and and then does your voice then become a character? Yes, it, it's uh, yes in that which is really f- uh, written from the first person of a mother who's lost her son in battle, and the one battle that I was focused on was the one at Vimy Ridge, but, you know, I think that any uh, family member, mother or otherwise, that has lost a loved one in, in uh, you know, what, 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 that, what that, that person believed to be in the best interests of humanity, um, that it, there's all these, these tensions of questions of, you know, on one hand, you're called to serve your country. Uh, on on the other hand, you know, this is a person who's really lost a loved one, and that's really a tough moment. Now, I, I don't know if you're aware, but I'm the honorary colonel 
of uh, for the Royal Canadian Air Force. I saw, it. I saw. It. Uh, and and back during the time that we had people in Afghanistan, I had the uh, very somber and privileged uh, occasion to attend a couple of ramp ceremonies in Trenton. Mm. And and you know with with that kind of um, reference point where you're watching the families come out of the terminal, the aircraft is there, the, the back ramp goes down. Yeah. And all these things go rushing through your mind, and you you're trying to imagine what that family has felt that yes they 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 too uh experience a considerable sacrifice and um yeah so well uh, so so these kinds of experiences as well give what I would like to feel our our sincerity and a kind of authenticity to the to what I'm singing would you miss performing if you didn't? Well, uh, I, I, pro- I, I, I would, although, you know, it's interesting from an anthropological standpoint, you mm-hmm. know, performing in formal environments is something, you know, not completely uh, you know, natural, you might say. And every time I go on tour and I stand in front of some, I mean, I've just finished a tour, about five-week tour in Europe and Turkey and Greece, and I think some of our larger venues were about 4,000 people. And I get on, I get in front of the the, the audience, and I, I I I think this is a fair, totally unnatural act. But I I must say, with the thing that I really do love, and I miss now, uh, and that is just singing and making music in an informal way with wow. you know friends and family. It's wow. the equivalent of you know singing around the campfire. That is what I really miss. And you haven't had a lot of time to do that. You've been on the road, a road warrior, um, for many many years. Uh, and I'm getting a sense that uh, that road part of you might might be done shortly. Yes, I, I'm. I think in the face of where I'm at in my you know uh, career, but in my life and my family, um, and there are other uh, needs and priorities that that sometime in different phases of your life come come into view that weren't there before. <clears throat> And I also think that I'm trying to put my own house in order. I think of the really big ticket uh, uh, items in our society, and you know, of course, the, the climate emergency being one. And the other subject that is very uh, um, close to my heart is the unintended consequences of technology as it pertains to um, our democracies, our businesses, our ch- our children, our their mental health and well-being, and uh, so I feel that um, I-, I may want to spend some time uh, w- using my time and resources in a in a in a different direction than than for my career uh, per se. I mean, I-, I call it my career. I mean, it's it's a deep passion of mine, and and I've enjoyed performing for people around the world and and have been um, given an incredible opportunity to to learn so many things. But I think in the immediate sense, I won't say that I'm never going to perform after this fall, but I certainly feel that I I need to lean against other uh, urgent priorities. I knew this would be a a bit of a two-part because we're talking about Road to the Lemon Grove, mm-hmm. which is which is a film, uh, but also there's Lost Souls out there, your album from 2018, which you're touring behind currently, and then mm-hmm. there's a there's a live album um, uh, mixed and ready to go, uh, uh, live at Royal Albert Hall. When would we see yes, that? Yes, yes. Well, we record. We were in Europe touring in uh, March as well. We were in the nor- more the northern part of of Europe, and uh, within the first week, we we performed at the Royal Albert Hall, and given kind of the prestigious nature of the hall, we thought, well, uh, and because I'd already been kind of indicating that I might be winding things down a bit, um, we thought, mm, why don't we just capture this uh, this for posterity? <laughs> and uh, it was a wonderful evening, and I had invited some of the musicians that had played on the recording of Lost Souls, um, uh, like the, the flamenco guitarist from Spain and another nickel harper, uh, uh, it's a very unusual and wonderful instrument. This performance also came from Spain, as well as some of our our guest musicians from Canada playing the Ulian pipes and and uh, hurdy gurdy. Yes. 
so it 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 really kind of broadens out the whole experience. But yes, that's going to be released. It's packaged with the tickets for our tour, our small Eastern Canada Canada tour, um, in October and beginning of November, and then it'll be released uh, at retail about the same time. Won't you miss us? <laughs> we, we the audience. <laughs> well. Uh, 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 I, of, co- of course, of course. I mean, I think what has been almost uh, to the point of being overwhelming is how, uh, how the connections that have been made through my music, and it's been yeah, very, very humbling and very uh, touching. And you know, I think at the end of our days, um, we want to make we want we, we want our lives to have meaning, and I feel very lucky that. Um, my life, I think, has had some <laughs> sense of meaning. Um, what's this, what's this, what's the uh, the phrase, uh, Lorena? The human stain, mm-hmm. the 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 stain that we leave on on the texture of life itself. I, I realize this is this is heavy subject, but basically, it's your legacy. Are you happy with your legacy? Uh, am I happy with my particular legacy? I I I I think so. I mean, you know, there may still be uh, a a little left to go. We'll see. But I I am. I mean, the whole thing is an amazing surprise <laughs> because I never could have dreamed that my career could have been built to the extent that it has, or gone on as long as it has, or had offered me these incredible opportunities to to travel the world, not just performing, but in in a kind of act of self education. As I've I've traveled on a you know a train by myself across Siberia, I've been into Morocco, <laughs> you know, all Ma- Rajasthan, all manner of place in the kind of uh, a pursuit of the history of the Celts and all the history around that. So it's been, um, you know, a, a tremendous uh, uh, journey. Um, and I, I, you know, when this all does come to a close, which everything must, you know, of course I will m- miss that connection, but I, I also have a lot of lovely, lovely memories. You could have, at another time and another place, been the world's greatest busking Veterinar- <laughs> veterinarian, you could have been a singing, there you go. a singing veterinarian, but no, <laughs> but no. And Celtic music is it alive and well? Or should we be concerned about its future? Well, uh, in in Ireland, there's an incredible resurgence of it, and a real, you know, young generation uh, that's going on there. And I believe, you know, there still is a, a quite a vibrant. Uh, seen going out and happening in the Maritimes of Canada. Um, I mean, it's 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 a, it's a genre of music or it's a modality that I have um, pondered on all my, uh, you know, ever since I became aware of it. And I thought, what is it in this modality that is so infectious, not just to people who have uh, a you know a history of of Celts in their background, but how it seems to be so uh, easily accessible to people all around the world. And um, so I, I, I think that, that's, a, that's a hopeful sign. I, I just want, I want to see more music in the schools and in family life. I want to see far less technology. In fact, I don't want to see any technology in children's life until they're maybe 14. Wow. But I want to see a lot of music. And and I and I think that it's not unlike heritage architecture, that we we a part of the forming of our identity I think is through those things like food and music and and yeah so. Is there a book in you? <laughs> well, I've I possibly I mean I've been approached a couple of times and I've been started a, a bit on my own and then I think. You know what? Why am I do? What What do I have to say? <laughs> um, uh, it's possible. You know, I think uh, one of the the uh, unusual aspects of my career is that I've 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 never had a manager, so I've uh, um, managed my own career all these years and had staff where uh, uh, other artists wouldn't, and that's been a uh, in the in the long run a blessing because it's allowed me to continue on in my career uh, to this point and still have a very successful career, whereas because the industry has collapsed so severely, a lot of much more 
talented and, and deserving artists than myself have had to pack it in. Um, and I suppose if you know if there was a book, you know, there's there's it's it's an interesting little story about you know busking in the streets and raising enough money uh, to do my own recordings. And there's lots of fun stories <laughs> along the way. But I think um, I think that it, it would probably say a few things. And one is, you know, you, you, that you can do a lot yourself if if you if you want to. She is Lorena McKinnon. She's played the role of God in a movie that's out now on your theater screens. It's called Road to the Lemon Grove. Uh, her album is called Lost Souls, released in 2018. And do watch for the Lorena McKinnett live at Royal Albert Hall as well, and whatever comes down the pipe. This is Mulligan Stew. I'm Terry David Mulligan.